Hi, we're going to look at a couple of examples here where we have to decide whether our set is a subspace of R2 or not and then show that. So these examples are a little bit more difficult than the last ones we looked at because in the last few examples I did, the problem told us that it either is or is not a subspace of whatever overlying vector space we are interested in and then we just needed to show it. But here, we actually have to decide whether or not the set is a subspace of R2. And depending on what we decide about that, that's going to impact a little bit how we proceed with the problem. So we have that subspace theorem, or a very useful theorem, and it says that if we have this overlying vector space with a set of scalars, and W is a non-empty subset of V, then we can check those two closure properties. And so if W has additive closure, so we could say W is closed under vector addition, and W is closed under scalar multiplication, that provided those things are true, we can then conclude that W is a subspace of V with those same scalars. And that is an if and only if theorem, so that theorem actually works both ways. All right, so um, we might need to think about this a little bit. If I want to show that W or my set U here is indeed a subspace of R2, then I need to show that those closure properties both hold and hold in general. If I have decided that my set is not a subspace, then I just need to show that one of those closure properties fails and in order to use the subspace theorem anyway. I could use other theorems certainly as well, but in using the subspace theorem, I just need to show that one of those closure properties fails, and so I just need a single counterexample to show that that fails. So showing that something is a subspace is a little bit more work to write out than to show that something is not a subspace. So my advice is to pause the video and try these two problems and then restart the video to check what you've done and check your logic. So of these two examples, these are the two examples from our class notes. Hopefully you figured out that number 13 is actually the easier one uh, because this one is not a subspace of R2. Actually both closure properties fail. The condition here is that the first component of the vector has to be 3. So if I take just a scalar, say like 2 and a vector that is in the set like 3, 0 and I do that scalar multiplication and I get a vector that is not in the set. So I've written down an example there. I really should write some words around that to demonstrate what I'm trying to say here. Uh, so that I'm just saying here for my scalar 2 and my vector 3, 0 that is in this set U, that 2 times 3, 0 is not in the set U. So I've used the symbol here, not an element of U. So the scalar multiplication closure does not hold. So we can say that U is not a subspace of R2. Okay, number 12 here is the one that is a subspace of R2, and if you didn't know whether it was a subspace or not, I would actually probably go about it like I'm going to go about 12, trying to show that it is, and then what you should run into if it's not is some trouble justifying why it actually is. So this one is a subspace of R2, and I just need to show that. So I want to start with two arbitrary vectors that are in the set. And I'm going to use subscripts here. You can either use subscripts or different letters. X1, Y1, and X2, Y2 both be in the set. And so I'm going to write down what that means for those vectors to be in the set. It means that those entries of those two by one matrices or two dimensional vectors satisfy that equation. Um, so 2X1 plus 3Y1 is going to equal zero. And that's also true for the second vector, 2x2 plus 3y2 is also equal to 0. And so I'm going to show that the additive closure holds. So I'm going to lead my reader through this 
So I could write a whole sentence here, but I'm kind of just doing a little shorthand version of a proof here. So additive closure, what I want to show is that the sum of those two vectors is also in the set. So I'm going to first of all write down the sum here. And what I want to show is that that resultant vector satisfies that defining equation that defines what it means for something to be in that set. So for this vector here, I want to show that 2 times the first entry, so the first entry is really x1 plus x2, plus 3 times the second entry is equal to 0. So what I want to show is that that is equal to 0. So I either need to put a question mark here or not write anything at all there and just simplify the left side until I get to zero. We don't want to write equal zero without anything there because that's then assuming what it is you're trying to show. So I'm going to put here question mark equals zero. But I'm really just going to work on the left side until I get it to equal zero. All right, I'm going to distribute through and rearrange terms here on the left side. All right, so I use distributive property and then I use some commutative and associative properties so that I now have these grouped with the x1, y1 together and the x2, y2 together. And then I'm going to go up here to the beginning of my statement here and use these defining characteristics that tell me what happens when I start with two vectors in the set. That 2x1 plus 3y1, that part is going to be 0 and 2x2 plus 3y2 is also going to be 0, and 0 plus 0 does indeed equal 0. So that means that this sum of these two vectors is in the set W. Alright, so I wrote up here my claim that that is in the set W, and then below that I have my justification for that claim. Alright, and then I need to show also that scalar multiplication closure holds. So I start with some vectors in the set. I really just need one of them and I need some scalar in the set. So I'm going to go back up here to the beginning and just say I'm going to let C be some scalar in my set of scalars. Notice this problem doesn't really state what the scalars are here. Uh, so in general in our textbook if they don't state what the scalars are you can assume that the scalars are the real numbers. They really should state somewhere and they probably do somewhere in our textbook in some paragraph somewhere they probably say unless otherwise stated you can assume that the scalars are the real numbers. Alright, so I'm going to let C just be an arbitrary scalar and the real numbers and then what I want to show is that that's arbitrary scalar times any vector in the set. I'm just going to use my x1, y1 that we had from before and what I want to show is that that product cx1, cy1, I want to show that that is in the set W. So that would be showing scalar multiplication closure. So here's my justification. I want to then look at what is the defining characteristic that makes this vector be in the set. And that would be that 2 times this first entry plus 3 times the second entry. Hopefully we can show that that equals 0. All right, what I'm going to do here is just factor out the C. So I've got 2x1 plus 3y1. And from up above, 2x1 plus 3y1 is going to be 0. So I have c times 0, which is indeed 0. So that scalar multiplication closure also holds. So therefore, then we can say by that subspace theorem, then since both of those hold, uh, w is a subspace of R2.